Hey y'all, my name is Roxy and today we're going to be talking about chest binding and we're going to go over some do's and don'ts. This information is provided to you by the Merced LGBT Center. So what is chest binding? So chest binding is a technique used to create a flatter looking chest. So in the image you can see this person without a binder. In the next image you can see the person with a binder and how their chest appears flatter than before. So what is the best way to bind your chest? The best way is to use a proper binder, which can be seen in the image above or below. The image above, this one right here, is a binder from Underworks, a tri-top chest binder. And the image below is a chest binder from Double T Collections. Aside from these two companies, there's other companies that sell binders and most of the time these companies sell their binders online. I'm going to give you all the prices for some of these chest binders. So for a tri-top chest binder from Underworks, the price there starts at $29.99. That price along with the other prices that I'm going to mention does not include taxes or shipping. Double T Collections, you can look at getting a binder from there, ranging from $32 to about $42. On Amazon, you can actually find a bunch of different brands of binders, and those prices vary from $4.99 to $29.99. If you cannot afford a binder, do not worry. There are a few programs available online that help distribute donated secondhand binders, and these binders often come from post-op trans men or from someone who may no longer need the binder or may no longer fit. I will have the link to these programs in the description so y'all can check them out. Some of them do require certain things from you and I'm not sure exactly for each one what that is, but you can check that out yourself. There are other resources like online. There's YouTube, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and a bunch of other social media sites that have people that go on here and do binder giveaways, contests, and others. These are really cool because you get to see who's part of your community and who's active online and is also helping out the community. Now, this is a cool way to also try to get a binder for free. And most of the time these binders are used, there are times where people go out and buy new binders, but it's different for each individual running the either giveaway or contest. So people have also tried using ace bandages and tape to bind, but is it okay to bind your chest with ace bandages or tape? And the answer is no. Never, ever, ever bind your chest with these products because you are going to be damaging your body. And there are some health concerns related to chest binding with either of these two products. This includes damage to blood vessels that may be in your chest area or damage to, to your ribs. And what can happen to your ribs is that you can even fracture your ribs if you are binding your chest too tight. This can increase the risk of puncturing or collapsing a lung. Now there are health concerns related to chest binding with a binder or with an alternative method, which would be with the ACE bandage or the tape. If you bind your chest with a binder or with ACE bandage or tape, you are going to experience some back problems. If you bind your chest too tightly, it will compress the spine and it could lead to serious back issues. I have three tips for you on binding. So the first, if you're rolling on a budget, try and seek for safe alternative ways to bind. I've heard of people using two sports bras instead of one because it's 
makes your chest appear a little flatter and although it's not the perfect flatness maybe it might be enough for you to just feel comfortable with and it's also not going to be damaging your body and it might also just be more affordable for you and it's a way to start number two don't bind for too many hours especially while you sleep or exercise general rule seems to be about eight to ten hours which is like work day or a full school day it is important to take off your binder before you sleep that way you can give your body a rest from wearing it for x amount of hours that you did also it's important to exercise without a binder because binders are made to compress your chest and they make movement and breathing more difficult so instead of using a very tight binder you might want to still use a binder so you might want to find a looser binder or maybe wear a sports bra with a loose t-shirt to work out in, but never work out with your binder on. Tip number three, take care of yourself and your binder. Make sure to check in with yourself after taking off your binder for the day and observe and take note on how your skin looks and feels because it's important to keep track of any changes that could implicate that your binder might be too small or that you're wearing it for too long. You can also maybe experience like a rash to a binder. You might be allergic to that certain material. So you need to keep note of all these things and take care of your binder. Like I said, wash it, keep it clean. When you don't have it on, throw it in the washer. Make sure it's always clean. So I wanted to end with just this quick note and to discuss chest binding with an expert to ensure that you get the best results and reduce the risk of complications and create optimal health for you. So if you have any questions on this video or any information that was included in this video, please contact us at the Merced LGBT Center at gmail.com. Thank you.